Well, with all the president's race baiting this week and attacks on four women in Congress, a lot of people are wondering why one of the most prominent women in the White House has gone silent. Ivanka Trump, where is she? There were reports that the first daughter and senior advisor advocated, along with First Lady Melania Trump, for her dad to repudiate his crowd send her back chant. Today, the president says there's no truth to that. What did the First Lady and Ivanka advise you about the chant? I know you guys talked about it. False information. It was fake news. You never talked about it with nope. them? No, I talked about it, but they didn't advise me. They told me. I'm sorry, what but did I they say? It's what did fake, they tell you? By the way, what you're saying, fake what news. Did, what did they tell you about it? Okay, so they talked about it. They didn't advise him. Senior political analyst uh, Lena Plot just wrote a whole article about uh, Ivanka Trump and, uh, the, well, well, we'll talk about it in, in The Atlantic. It's a fascinating article. I urge you to read it. So, Lena, the president says Ivanka didn't advise him about Wednesday night's chant. Uh, even if she did, it certainly doesn't seem to have had much effect. And I feel like there, I mean, I made a joke about this the other night before all this. It seems like every time there's something controversial that happens, there's a leak that Ivanka Trump, you know, was whispering in the president's ear her concern, which, you know, I don't know if it all comes from Ivanka Trump or her people, but it certainly seems like it does. Right. And there are two things I think that we can intuit from that pattern. Um, I also joke, too, about the source close to Ivanka, who just magically appears after <laughs> any controversial moment takes place. But the one thing is that um, why will she not say these things in public if she truly does believe that her father has done something racist or reprehensible, as the source close to Ivanka will imply, especially in this case, why not go on the record and say that? The second thing would be that the influence that she would telegraph that she had along the campaign trail as a way to kind of ease moderates' minds um, in voting for him, she clearly doesn't really seem to have that. Right. I mean, she has enough influence that she can, you know, uh, go to the G20 and try to <laughs> right. shoehorn herself into a conversation with world leaders or show up in the DMZ. But when the rubber hits the road and there's something, you know, uh, repulsive or unattractive uh, that the president is doing or, or racist, she's nowhere to be seen. Michael uh, Barbaro of The New York Times, he tweeted this today, quote, for the X time Ivanka Trump spoke with her father about X controversy he touched off, telling him X was problematic, according to X people close to her, who claim that despite mountains of evidence, this conversation mattered. I mean, it happens over and over again, this narrative. Right. And I think why it was important for me to report out this piece in particular is because, like you said, it did come on the heels of the G20 summit. It did come on the heels of her kind of elbowing her way into the demilitarized zone of all places, the most fraught, you know, tense, important negotiating spot probably on this entire globe. And you have to wonder if she is willing to step out when there's a historic photo op to be had, but not when the very moral fabric of our nation is called into question as it was this week, you know, who is she really in the White House for? Is it for herself, something to tell her grandkids about one day? Or is it to actually, you know, steer the direction of this country in a positive matter? Well, the idea that, I mean, you know, she portrays herself as somebody fighting for, for women's mm -hmm. empowerment, and, and maybe she, she is doing stuff, her, but her father spent the week trying his hardest to disempower four prominent mm -hmm. uh, congresswomen, uh, you know, of color. And, you know, the irony that she is the champion of women with this president and the way, you know, he has spoken about women and, uh, you know, some of the allegations against him, it, it's ironic if it wasn't uh, you know, actually important. Real, yes. <laughs> like an actual thing taking place um, within the bounds of the leader of the free world. And another point to that, too, is, you know, comical but also scary is that anytime something like this happens, the the bounds of her portfolio get um, suddenly narrower and narrower. So women's empowerment was sort of the umbrella that she came in with. And when something like this happens when the president is, you know, disempowering women, as you point out, suddenly it's, no, this is about women's economic empowerment in the Ivory Coast. Um, so the four congresswomen in America don't necessarily fall into that boundary. Right, and I, and I think you quote in your article that on, on some show she was confronted about uh, something regarding women's empowerment. She said, well, I'm not the president of women's empowerment or something towards she that said, effect. Right. She said, I'm not the president of all women's issues. But that's the thing. I mean, it's this like lovely oblique phrase that you can throw out anytime you're right. questioned about something that you find uncomfortable. Yeah. Uh, Elena Plot, again, it's an article in The Atlantic. Uh, I urge people to read it. Thanks so much. Thanks, Anderson.